everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And tonight, we're going to be learning how to make guiding adjustments in a live environment. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Now let's jump on in and learn how to make guiding adjustments. Now, when it comes to guiding, it's important to understand that there are multiple factors that can affect how your mount is guiding. Balance, polar alignment, even the guide scope focus. So assuming all of that is good, we can move on to fine tuning. Now just a quick review from part one. If we go into view, these are the objects that I have open on my current PhD2 screen. That's gonna include the actual star itself this little graph over here along with the vital numbers as I like to call them and then of course we have the actual graph now looking at the actual star here if we focus on this star we'll see that it moves slightly every exposure that star is moving and that's because of seeing along with little tracking errors little things like that and as we see this star is moving we can pick that up on this little graph here we'll notice how this little red dot is dancing around and all of the blue dots are the points at which the star lands with each and every exposure also another visualization that we have of the movement of the guide star is going to be the actual guiding graph as i mentioned in part one every time our guide star moves with each exposure it's represented in the graph here with red representing declination movements and blue representing ra movements and the same thing goes in here. Every movement of the guide star is represented by a dot on this graph. So how do we fine tune our guiding? Now, right now, I'm currently tracking M31 with my 200P and my EQ6R Pro mount. The concepts I'm about to show you will work with any mount out there. So again, as a quick review, we have our RA and our declination aggression, and that's going to be how hard we shove that mount. Are we just love tapping it or are we shoving it? We have our minmo for RA, and then we have our minmo for declination. These numbers represent how far are we going to allow the guide star to move before we issue a guide command and then we have our max ra and our max declination this is in milliseconds and this is how long of a guide pulse we will allow now jumping right into it we can see here that my minmo is currently set at 0.15 for both ra and declination so how do I figure out where I want that? These numbers are going to be directly represented by our RA and declination numerical values. I look at the values that are outside of the parentheses. Right now, RA is guiding with an average of 0.09 and declination is guiding with an average of 0.06. And my minmo settings are 0.15 on both RA and declination. I'm running my guiding pretty loose, actually. I am mainly following the natural tracking of the mount. Now, this mount does pretty good. And you can have a temperamental mount where you're going to need to adjust this. I'm also in particularly good seeing right now. So I do tend to adjust these depending on the night. Now, one thing that you're gonna notice here, declination represented by the red line doesn't have that many 
guide pulse commands. You don't really guide in declination. You don't really track in declination. You can, but declination really, for the most part, is just along for the ride. You're moving from east to west, and that is done in RA. Now, RA is a little bit bouncy right now. We have a little bit of, you know, guide commands um, here and there, and that's okay. So, currently my total RMS is 0.38. I would just let this ride all through the night just the way it is. But what happens as we adjust some things? So first, let's tighten up some minmo here. So right now our average in RA is 0.09, average in declination is 0.05. Let's go to RA and let's put this to 0.09. Let's go right up against our average and declination 0.05. Now it's important to understand as you make adjustments, you're gonna to wanna to click in another box to actually make that adjustment active. Now notice here on the far right of the graph, now we're starting to get adjustments in declination. And that's because we are right up against the average. So any little bit of movement that that guide star is doing uh, beyond what the average is, PHD2 is gonna react. It's gonna send a, um, a guide pulse command. But as we can see here, we're still running 0.35 total RMS. We're also getting more RA guide commands. Again, we tightened up that guiding. We're right on the average. And if we take this and let's let's drop it even more. Let's go below the average on both of these. And we're just going to see more guide pulse commands happening. We can already see in declination, we're getting more and more commands because now we are issuing guide commands for any little movement. Mm -hmm. And notice how it's starting to go up a little bit on the numerical value. And that's because right now we're chasing the seeing. We're trying to go too tight with it and we can see a whole slew of commands happening. So Again, this is gonna be by feel. This is gonna be by um, how your mount behaves. What type of seeing are you in? Now, let's go ahead and loosen this all the way up. Let's go to 0 0.30 on both of these. So now we're at the opposite end of the spectrum. We are completely loosened up. We're not really gonna see too many guide commands with this because we are so far above the average of the guiding right now. Try to think of these two top numbers here, numerical RA and numerical declination as your average guiding, your average seeing. So now since we loosened all the way up, notice how our guide pulse commands are pretty much gone. We're in natural tracking of the mount. This is where you're gonna see some polar alignment errors. You could see some balance errors. Notice how our declination and RA are starting to separate a little bit. And that's because we're issuing really too few of guide commands. We're not really guiding enough. So, it's a fine balance. Where I try to stay is, I try to stay just a couple of um, marks above numerical value. I might even just loosen up declination to um, double what my numerical declination value is. Now, let's go ahead and play with some aggression here. I'm gonna move RA aggression to 100. Now I'm getting away from the love tap and I'm going to go into a little bit more of a shove. And I may have to, um, let me go ahead and tighten up Minmo a little bit so we can start issuing some commands here. 
and we can see what the effect of this is. So notice how that guide pulse on RA was a lot stronger. The shorter, if we look over where my cursor is, the shorter this little rectangle, the lighter the guide command. The taller the rectangle, the stronger the guide command. So you can essentially dictate how your guiding behaves. If you don't have a minmo option, you could technically adjust the aggression on each axis and kind of influence it to do more of what you want to do um, by adjusting the aggression, lightening it up, um, softening it. Notice how here we had an aggressive RA guide pulse and how it overshot it. We just straight overshot the zero line because we're too strong on the guide pulse. And the same thing goes for declination. Let's go ahead and lower declination to my actual numerical declination value so we can issue some pulses here. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna decrease declination. I'm gonna try to get some pulses here though so we can see what's going on. Uh, I'm gonna lower this down to 0 0.03 so it reacts to pretty much everything here. And we're gonna see, here we go, we got some guide pulse commands going. And it's funny, when you want guiding to act up, it tends not to. But then when you want it to go flawless is when you start getting some of those issues. Let's go ahead and lower this down to 0 0.01. and see if we can get some of these guide pulses. Let's lower this to 70. So while we wait for guiding to act up, let's talk about total RMS here. Now, this number this is the V number. This is ground zero. This is the number that everybody worries about. This number right here, I am happy with as long as it's under the resolution capability of my telescope. For example, I wanna say that my uh, 200P is 0.96 arc second resolution capability. As long as this number and opposite of these numerical R and declination, I'm worried about the ones that are in the parentheses. R and declination outside of parentheses, and these are the numbers that I'm going to use to determine minmo. The number under total within parentheses, that's the number that I want. That's the number that I'm concerned about and what I want below my uh, resolution capability. Now, here we have some guide pulses here. Let's go ahead and increase our aggression. Actually, let's lower it to 50. I don't know we're gonna see much just because we're getting so few uh, commands here. Um, but we notice how we have very short commands and that's because the aggression is, is low, right? Um, so if it, let's put it this way. If you have uh, a mount and it's issuing a bunch of guide commands and you want to kind of minimize that, lowering your aggression can calm that down. And on the flip side, if you need more, um, more effect of the guiding and you don't have a minmo setting you can increase the aggression to get more effect from each uh, guide pulse command so that's kind of what i wanted to show you here now let's go ahead and put these back to where i had them i generally will run my declination at 100 aggression my ra at 70 aggression 
I don't really ever touch the Max RA, Max Declination. Uh, and as far as Minmo goes, I'm just paying attention to these numbers and my total RMS here. Now, again, this slew of guide commands, that is due to having a Minmo setting very tight to the average. Now, one last thing I kind of want to leave you on here is picking up with um, total RMS. As long as this number, everyone wants to be low. Everyone wants to have a total RMS like this. And I'm going to be honest, I don't always have this type of total RMS. I hover generally between 0 0.5, 0 0.7, uh, depending on the night, sometimes I'll touch 0 0.8. But the main thing that I'm looking for are my stars good? Are my stars where I want them to be? And uh, if they are and they're nice and round, they're not elongated, as long as this number's below my total uh, resolution capability to the telescope, I'm happy. So don't, don't waste your time trying to chase extremely low RMS. Get it below the resolution capability of your telescope and ensure that your stars are nice and round and not elongated and you'll be just fine. So I hope you found this video useful and if you did and want to help support the channel, check out that join button and consider joining a Hidden Light Photography membership. There's lots of perks in it for you and your support helps me create more content. Also, another way you can help support the channel is checking out my High Point Scientific Affiliate link if you're in the market for some new gear. I'll have the link posted in the description of this video here. Also, do me a favor, that channel icon that popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Drop a comment in the comment section. Did you find this video useful? Do you have any questions? And then, check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.